Hello everyone, welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time walkthrough. Last time I became Adult Link and we got the hookshot, oh, although I didn't equip it yet. But I'm still here in Kakariko Village and there's one more thing of interest to do here. So you talk to uh, her, you remember her, the Kako lady, um, Anju, I guess is her name. Well, really that's the name that her counterpart in Majora's Mask goes by, but whatever. I'll just call her Anju to avoid confusion. Anyway, um, she says she's, able to, she's been able to breed a new type of Kako, and it's known as the Pocket Kako. And uh, she's not allergic to it, which is pretty fortunate for her, although I don't know why she's spending her life trying to, um, you know, make do things um she lives her life revolving around things that are allergic to her it's like someone who's gluten free trying to make artificial substitute gluten uh anyway uh anyway uh with that aside now you get the second round of having an egg except this time it's a pocket cucko and interesting thing she says that her cucko is not entirely happy but it's an egg it hasn't been born yet it hasn't hatched yet how do you know it's mood and how do you even know the mood of an animal? Animals don't typically have moods, and well, some of them do, but I imagine a chicken or a cucko just doesn't. So anyway, in this house, I wanted to show off. You hear that snoring? Look at that. It's Sleeping Mario over here, or Talon, as this game calls him. So this is where he's sleeping. Apparently he doesn't know the pillow from the foot of the bed, I guess, or the head of the bed from the foot. So you can talk to the other people here and well, this is just where he stayed ever since he was kicked out of uh, Ingo Ranch. But I changed it and it's been converted back into Lon Lon Ranch. So he doesn't know that yet and he's just kind of here. And they're just very annoyed that he's just sleeping in their house all day. And being very loud and just not doing anything. So we gotta fix that, don't we? I'm sure you know just what to do. Of course, the previous time, the very first time we did this was so long ago, we didn't even have um, luxurious conveniences like the, uh, the Sun Song. I almost said the Song of Time. No, the Sun Song here. So you just play that twice, and then a full day goes by, and then, as you expect, a cuckoo hatched from the egg, or the chicken, I suppose. Interesting, uh, they're called cuckoos, but I guess the text box here doesn't know that. Okay, so it's already equipped. There it is, the pocket cucko. And I was actually just checking my quest status um, information just to see if I was all up to date and everything, which I was. Okay, so come back inside of the house and pull this out, and he says the exact same dialogue. What in tarnation can a person get a little shut eye around here? Interesting. So you talk to him. If you do this before you save Mel on uh, Lawn Lawn Ranch, then he'll actually say something else. He'll just tell you the unfortunate events that have happened there. But if you talk to him after you save Lawn Lawn Ranch, then he goes back there. And now every time you go to Lawn Lawn Ranch, you can find him in the stables during the day and I think out by the corral during the night. And he's just going to tell you that he's going to be a hard worker from now on, even though he just sort of stands around all day. But okay, I trust him. Okay, so now you come and bring your cuckoo back to Anju here, and then she will be very impressed and say your cuckoo must have wakened a very lazy guy. Lady, you don't know the half of it. So, since now she sees we are quite the excellent, amazing cuckoo keeper, she's going to give us a rare cuckoo named Kohiro. At least I imagine that's how it's pronounced. Uh, so, this one is interesting because, as you can see, he's blue. So... I don't know if this is some sort of magic or if maybe he accidentally got into um, some blue potion. I don't know if he got blue potion spilled all over him, but whatever. Anyways, with Kohiro in pocket, I guess you can just go ahead and take it all the way back to Kokiri Forest. And it's kind of a distance away, so you've noticed I've sped this part of the video up. And you should be very happy now if you followed along with me from the previous video. Look at this. Look at how fast I can run around Hyrule Field. It looks ridiculous with two times speed here, but <laughs> it is such a nice convenience now, and it's very awesome. You can literally do this at any point in time of the game. However, it is quite a shame that Epona is only limited to like Hyrule Field and like Lake Hylia and Garuda Valley, and that's pretty much it. Nowhere to the east, which is kind of annoying. Okay, welcome back to Kokiri Forest, I suppose. Nope, that was a text message on my phone. Welcome back to Kokiri Forest, and look at that, um, there are 
swarms of enemies here. This is uh, not the um, innocent, playful, happy place that it used to be. Yeah, a series of unfortunate events have happened here at Kokiri Forest. Not doing very well. There are mad Deku scrubs. There are giant Deku Babas, which we haven't seen yet. Look at these things. They're so big. They're so big. And they have quite a lot more health than normal. But anyway, previously I won the Corral uh, minigame at Lon Lon Ranch. And Milan delivered a present to my house. So let's go and see what it is. Would you look at that? It's a cow. Now, I actually wrote in the description that there's a cow in the treehouse, just so that, you know, I wouldn't hold up any suspense. So if you read the description of the video, you would know that there's a cow here. And you're probably wondering, well, why would they just stick a giant cow in my treehouse? It's taking up so much space and it doesn't even pay rent. Well, it gives you free milk at least, so you pretty much never have to go shopping again. <laughs> Is awesome not that you do in this game anyway because link apparently can just live forever without eating or drinking anything in this game or sleeping links a superhuman really and he just never gets tired okay i was trying to um equip my items on the right buttons i sort of have a system where i have the ocarina set on c down and then like other items on c left and right that's sort of my system there all right now i just fought a bunch of enemies here just to show them off there's no benefit to fighting them at all i just wanted to sort of show them off and i also want to show off what the hook shot does so if you remember using the boomerang the boomerang can stun certain enemies and turn them blue well the hook shot can also do that but it doesn't work with every enemy here now I also wanted to come in the house to show you some of the Kokiri here. You see, interestingly enough, they are still children and look pretty much the same, which is probably not what you were expecting. I was very confused the first time and thought, did they forget to just make them adults? But um, no, they actually didn't. The interesting thing is that Kokiri don't grow up. They stay as children pretty much their entire lives. Um, very interesting. And you can talk to them and... Yes, this is sped up too, just because I spent quite a lot of time doing this. You talk to them and they'll just tell you that, oh, the forest has gone to utter chaos because, well, the great Deku Tree died and there's no one to protect us from dark magic from the enemies, you know, spawning here in the forest. What's become pretty much a child's playground is now just a, a monster's lair. Like, seriously, even though the happy, playful, innocent, joyous music is still here, well, as long as we're not around enemies, then be there but okay here in the lost woods where you want to go is um actually not to the right that was a mistake you want to go to the left here immediately and kohiro will immediately crow whenever you enter the lost woods so you take him over to the left and look at this it's the uh dude who was under the tree at, in kakarika village at night uh well while you were a kid i hope that made sense um i'll, I'll refer to him i suppose as grog even though that's his majora's mask counterpart's name again I don't care, he needs an actual name, I think, so Grog it is. And Grog here, uh, he actually has a very sad life, but um, you can just look up his story, I guess, for some other video. So you show him Kohiro, and he'll be amazed that you are a nice guy who can take care of him just like he can. And then he will give you an odd mushroom, and he says you need to hurry and deliver it to the Kakarika Village Potion Shop. So, as you can see, there's a timer, but the thing is, the interesting uh, part, whenever it sh starts in the center, and then it goes up to the top corner there, you actually have a couple seconds. It doesn't actually start until it gets to the corner, so just keep that in mind for any timed activity in this game. I probably should have explained that last time there was, like whenever we were in the Death Mountain Crater, but I don't think I did very well. All right. Up here on Death Mountain, you'll see, you come up here, and then you jump down, do be careful, um, and you should have plenty of time, as you can see, yes, the video is sped up, that's just because, well, I just want to get to the point. Um, it is nighttime here too, um, may, do make sure it is daytime, so just play the sun song while you are here on the Death Mountain Trail. If you do play it in Kakarika Village and, um, you know... It resets your time. Uh, it resets the uh, daylight night cycle. I don't think the timer will be affected, so don't worry about that. So you actually want to come out to this pink structure behind. You may have seen it as a kid and wonder what it was. Well, now you finally know. So here is the old hag at the potion shop, and she's very um, witch-like. I've always thought she's not, but that's just always what I thought of her. And she's petting this adorable little baby tiger. I don't even know how you get baby tigers in Hyrule. So then we give her the odd mushroom and then well, the whole room goes dark and 
Well, the fire comes back on. Alright, so now she made that into an odd potion. Uh, I always thought that potions were supposed to be in a bottle. That looks like a piece of candy that you opened up the wrapper from and it's just stuck in there. Like a piece of sour candy. I don't know, I don't like sour candy very much. Anyway, um, this is not timed, thankfully, so it's pretty good. I still sped up the clip anyway just to, um, you know, show you something. Whenever I first played this game as a kid and the room went dark and then she set the fire in again, I thought that what she did was she wanted to hide the fact that she burnt the mushroom, but that's not what happened. Now anyway, I wanted to show this off real quick. Uh, you can use the hook shot to get onto the roof, only the ones that have like the, you know, not the metal texture on it. And then you talk to this guy right here, and then he'll just give you a piece of heart. Now there actually is a way to get onto this roof as Child Link. If you stand on the tower and then you side jump, you will land on the fence, and then you just climb up the fence, climb on the roof, and then you talk to that guy, and he'll give you the piece of heart. Interesting. Uh, I actually discovered that on my own, um, but I just want to do it here. Now there is another piece of heart right here too that I just remembered in this video. Now there is a way of getting it without using that magic bean, but this is with the magic bean. So that is how you're supposed to get it in the default game without using any like tricks or anything. That's, I guess, the expected way. Use the magic bean. Okay, now with that done, let's go ahead and go back to the Lost Woods using our Goron City shortcut. I did not want to fall all the way down here. That was quite annoying. Um, goodness, it takes a while. Oh, and there is a Golden Skull to available right here in the Goron City, so you can just use your hookshot to kill it and collect the token, which is pretty nice. Do be careful though, if you aim off, then it'll hook onto the wood and then it will bring you towards the wood. I guess it's not a bad thing because you'd still get the token, I suppose. It's just that it would be annoying to climb up again. Okay, here we finally are and He's not here, it seems, and I pulled it out without Z-targeting her. So he's not here, and she's going to say something about that right here. You remember this girl? I don't actually remember her name, but that's not really relevant right now. And so she's going to tell you a very sad fate that happened to Grog. Anybody who comes into the Lost Woods will be lost and become a Stalfos. Now, we, haven't, we don't know what Stalfos are, but maybe we will later on. Hmm. So anyway, she gives you the poacher saw. And it's not exactly obvious what this is used for, and I know that. So I am not actually going to be doing anything with this right now. I'm going to return to this much, much later in the game, but just keep in mind now that you have the poacher's saw. I think now it is time to progress in the main story, don't you think? Uh, but first, actually, I want to reset the um, Lost Woods. Alright, anyway... I want to go ahead and change the time to night because there is a golden skulltula that you can pick up here in Lost Woods while it is nighttime. So, to be sure for that. Or really two. There's one in the Sacred Forest Meadow and there's one here in the Lost Woods. So, I also want to show this off too. You look down there at the Skull Kids and it looks like they're spitting something at you. Yeah, um, do not go play with Skull Kids while you're an adult. Skull Kids don't like adults at all. Uh, anyway, you come over here and you remember Mido here, so he's blocking your way and he's saying you can't fool me, you're not a Kokiri, you're a grown-up. Kokiris don't grow up, or the Kokiri don't grow up. So go ahead and pull out your ocarina and play Saria's song for him and that will prove to him that you are one of Saria's friends, which he otherwise would believe is impossible. So, of course, now he's going to trust you and... He's going to say that you remind him an awful lot of him, whoever him is. Okay, so basically he's saying that I remind him of Link, but he doesn't know that I'm Link because, well, he thinks that Link is a Kokiri and Kokiri don't grow up. Okay, good news. In this room, there are no business scrubs to annoy you. Now, that's pretty good news in my opinion. So ride up this ledge and kill this Golden Skulltula and... Other than that, this is a pretty useless magic bean location. It's really only used to get this golden skulltula, so not even necessary for 100% completion. I guess really none of the magic beans are necessary, but still, you can show them off, I suppose. Okay, come in here, and then to the sacred forest meadow. It's been a long time since we have been here, so no wolfos this time, even though I, for some reason, expected there to be. 
Uh, but there's another problem to deal with instead of Wolfos, something way, way worse. And of course, Navi is going to interrupt you immediately as you come in here and just tell you about Z targeting to look, you know, to the side of walls and these passages. Do you remember it? She interrupted us from the same thing whenever we were in the Dodongo's cavern. So, in case you've forgotten, don't know if you have, but in case you've forgotten, you can use Z targeting. And we have a new enemy here. These ones are moblins. And. Interesting thing enough, you cannot Z-target them. And I never understood why. I guess just because they didn't intend for you to fight them with your sword. And the thing is, here's how they work. As soon as they see you, they will just charge at you and they will impale you. They won't kill you, actually. I think they'll only do, like, one heart of damage or something like that. So, really not even all that serious, but they're more of an inconvenience than a, uh, you know a way to make this place impossible. So I wanted to make this one see me just so that he would come closer. Oh, and shielding does not work on these things. And I was trying to hit him with my sword, except he got away too quickly. Shielding does not work on these things, so don't just pull your shield out thinking, oh yeah, I'll be okay, because, well, no, you won't. Okay, do be careful here, um, because some of them can turn to the side, these ones can, and the other ones cannot. They sort of have a set path going only forward or backward. Alright, so I was trying to move to the side. It is also worth noting that if you are using an item that's first person mode, say that be the slingshot, the boomerang, or the hook shot, or other things that we'll get in the future, you can hold down the Z button and then you can walk side to side, but not forward or backwards. It'll only change your viewpoint. So anyway, here is a golden skull up on here, but it's only here at nighttime. So if it's daytime, then play the sun's song. Um, it would be annoying you have to come back through this sort of maze again, but it's not really a maze. It's like, if you look at the map, it's the shape of an S and then a, a square at the top. Not really a maze because you can't really get lost in here. I mean, the map is very easy to read. But okay, done with that. Or I thought so at least. There is a big moblin here, and this one has a giant club that he pounds on the ground, and they cause quakes, so they're very aggressive. and. You have to move out of the way, and then, of course, he's an idiot because he can't attack any you from behind. So, you attack him from behind by attacking his behind. Haha. <laughs> okay, uh, not really worth anything. He just leaves some rupees. You could have just avoided it, but, I mean, come on, where's the fun in that, right? So, climb up these stairs to find Saria, and, well, it appears that she isn't here. Alright, so the menu at a forest allows you to teleport to that spot right there. Anyways, when you're done, go ahead and pull out your hookshot and grab onto this tree, and join me in the next video where we will be doing our very first Adult Link dungeon.